You're not in Cali if you're not on California soil. Watch P, there's Rita, yeah, yeah. Watch P, nah. What's up, world? Welcome to California Soul. My name is DJ Throwback, and on today's show, we have our special guest, who's not only the executive producer of the show, but is also known for her starring role and historical performance in the Steven Spielberg 11 Oscar-nominated film, The Color Purple, as Young Seeley. We're gonna take it back to the 80s, to the mother of the film that birthed two musical plays, The Color Purple. But before we meet Desrita Jackson, let's check her out in this clip. What is one of your favorite memories from being on set of The Color Purple? Okay, oh, okay. I honestly have a lot of them, but I'll share. One is not on set. I'll share with you um, this one with Oprah. Okay. Um, because I was the only kid in the movie, we shot that in North Carolina. So literally there was no adults, I mean, no kids around, just the adults. Oprah became like um, this mother figure. She would just kind of be like, come here, follow me around. <clears throat> and she would be very protective of me, of people and certain things, if you know, certain things were being said. Yeah, just, just like kind of sheltering you to make sure you're not getting caught up in it. Yeah, she was really that kind of person. And she, I would sometimes take part in like the same room while she's doing the business. Mm -hmm. and. When I finished the color purple and I went back home, she didn't stop. She, she used to fly me out and just, she, at the time, she, a lot of people knew she was doing the Chicago. Right, um, the TV talk show. Yeah, the day, right, the Chicago talk show and she was known for that and she would fly me out and I would stay with her. And, um, you know, I'll stay in the bed with her. I'll just like kind of lay down while she takes care of business or work and talk. But that was really influential to me as a child, kind of in my developmental years, right. because I, to this day, realize that a lot of, I do that with my kids, like my little, like I make them come with me when I go to business. I make them sit around when I'm talking, mm -hmm. when I'm doing, because I realize how much it helped me to see a frame of thinking and right. it made me realize more about business without subconsciously knowing it. And I was like, I don't know if Oprah did that purposely or whether she knew what she was doing or whether it was conscious and not conscious, right. but it definitely framed and helped part of my um, development mentally. Okay. You know, and I love that she, she bought my first nightgown. When, she, when I flew out wow. to her, she would take me shopping. She'd be like, I remember the first nightgown she bought me too was like three hundred dollars, and I oh, I kept thinking, you know, talking about a little girl from the hood. Right, you know, I was from like, the I was like, you know how much I could buy with that? <laughs> All right, so before moving to California, could you just tell us a little bit more about your hometown, where you come from? <laughs> okay, I'm actually from the British Virgin Islands, okay. and um, it's a small island, particularly named Totola. Totola. Um, growing up as a child, I have a lot of memories of being able to like just walk barefooted on the sand and walk to the beach um, as a regular like you go outside to play or like I'm out here I'll send my kids outside to play I would just go outside walk the sands and go straight to a beach wow. the sand I gotta say would be like I remember when I first came to California and I would see the beaches and I saw the sand was gray <laughs> and it threw me off because I'm known of sand to be a little bit more white. Um, and then the water was like blue or <laughs> something yeah, like, like that. Yeah, like yeah. It's a little, it's a little <laughs> blue mixed with um, toxic chemical. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But out there, the water was like, it was more like a green. It was just, yeah. it, the, the, it was just completely different in the surrealness of the beauty. Um, and California is beautiful, don't get me wrong, that I love California beaches too. It's just right. that there is a difference, difference. in what, mm -hmm, in, in the environment and how it was. Out there was a little bit more slower as far as um, like relax. Yeah, yeah, like you would take a ferry to get to another part of, um, of the island. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. You know, so you ride the boat, take a ferry, like how you do a bus here sometimes. Right. They have buses, but I'm just saying you're kind of like, oh, okay, we're gonna go to this island, so we'll take a ferry. All right, so you know, word on the street is that you know how to beat some people up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some karate. <laughs> uh, can you tell us about the Black Karate Federation and how you got involved with that? Oh yeah. Okay. The Black Karate Federation, um, that's like my heart and soul right there. Okay. Um, I, I, at some point, took a break from acting. Um, and that's because I was raped. At that time, it, um, I would go out to auditions. Mm-hmm. And, um, I was, you know, still a kid. It was right after the Color Purple. Color Purple um, came out, and like I said, I was new to Hollywood. I was new to a lot. I was right. new here. Just the LA life. Yeah, I was just new in a lot of ways, and um, young. And so the rape was very traumatic. Um, it was a very violent, traumatic situation on top of it. So I kind of found myself a little discombobulated. Mm-hmm. I was so messed up at, uh, at some point where that when I would literally just even go to school, I was still in school, mm-hmm. um, I, it's like I had to take two buses to school and just an example how emotional it was for me, I will take two buses and I didn't know that I didn't have shoes on or that I never did my hair mm-hmm. or that I was missing, like I only put a shirt on that day. So right. I, I took two buses, mesmerized or something traumatic, something and somebody would stop me and and let me know like you know hey, hey you know like sis, your shoes or... are you okay yeah, yeah. I, I walked into school like this and right. it was a girl one of these girls grabbed me and pulled me into the bathroom was like what's going on with you so i just i putting myself together and going to auditions as well mm-hmm. i remember going to an audition and i had really thought that i should you know like i wanted to do a particular character Sometimes you go in there and, that, and you know, like they have you read for multiple characters. And I remember saying something to a casting director one time where I was like, oh, you know, I like to do Lala. And she said, well, you're not the right complexion for Lala. And I, it never hit me, like, what she mean by complexion? Right. Um, and I said one time before, like, I never even realized my complexion. I didn't know I was dark skinned. I really didn't process that or that I was a darker black. I knew I was black. Black, right. Yeah, you but. You didn't it, know there was levels. You, right, I didn't. Right, or the, or the casting according to a color or right. according to. So it threw me off a little bit. And I would hear, sometimes when I go into, you go into the industry and you, you deal with certain things or certain comments and I just wasn't processing what they're talking about Mm -hmm. and at some point because of the emotion because of what had happened I was running you know you're coming I'm coming from a molestation situation as well and my mother just wasn't quite the kind of mother that knew how to handle things so she just ignored it it was kind of like Kind of just sweep it under the rug. Yeah, don't so, talk about it. Yeah, so when the rape happened, and that was her way of trying to deal with it. I think that was how she dealt with things. Right. So when the rape happened, she kind of was like, like kind of like that, but still it was me as a child trying to figure, figure out. out. By yourselves. Uh, right. And um, I took, I, that's why I took a, a moment from acting was because I just, I had to figure some stuff out. And I end up, once again, I said, sometimes you're where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. I end up going into a a, um, community center and there was a man called Steve Mm Muhammad who was teaching martial arts. And um, in the process of him teaching the martial arts, Mm -hmm. he taught Kempo and he was also, I didn't know at the time, the founder of what is known as the Black Karate Federation. Oh, okay. And the Black Karate Federation, historically, is one of the leading federations that you're talking about in, introduced. They walked with the Black Panthers. They're kind of like was why the Black Panthers themselves was also so well feared. Mm. That's what they did. And when you become part of the federation, and as he's teaching the structure, 
he also was teaching, they teach you about your, your history, your lineage, who you are. It became something where I needed going to that class and learning, not only learning martial arts, but they also was not only feeding me physically, but feeding me mentally. And that's what the Black Karate Federation did for me. It was, and I was, literally at some point, I was the only child amongst a group of masters. Because they knew I was raped, they surrounded me. And all of them, would, they would train me. They would train me and take me one by one out of, they would, you know, they would tell me things about um, Egypt, tell me things about my lineage, tell me where I'm from, tell me who I am. They would um, teach me how to defend myself, how to, um, they became like fathers to me. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like they treated you as the princess and basically letting you know why you're a princess and how to protect yourself. They did, they were, and, um, and to this day, they didn't leave. So wow. this is um, a, a, a family, a community that I have, you know? Mm -hmm. And yes, I am very, um, I've caught a couple cases. Well, just one case, but, <laughs> but you got um, it thrown off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was self-defending myself, yeah. you know? And, um, and that's what it was about. And, and since then, I've never, you know, looked at or saw myself as a victim or saw anything. Um, it helped define me. That's what's up. That definitely sounds like, you know, you went through something very traumatic, but the outcome has made you better, stronger, who you are now. It did, because when I left Hollywood, I also went to film school, and that was the whole purpose. Like, I love acting, I wanted to do it, but I was, like I said, I guess the journey made me realize what I felt the industry wasn't doing or needed. I went to film school, graduated, did my first film, the BKF, um, starting it for me. Okay. Um, and that was some amazing thing for my life, you know? And I always said I was gonna come back, and when I come back, I was gonna come back with a purpose, and I was gonna come back with a message, and I was gonna come back strong. <laughs> so, um, you're, getting a lot of, you're getting a lot of buzz right now about your book called The Black Hair Conspiracy. And you, know, and you can tell because, you know, the black hair business is a million dollar business. No, it's a ten billion dollar <laughs> business. Keep rising and pressure building up now. Pressure make a diamond. I figured this is how we sell them down. Girls bagging off. Loyalty doesn't exist. Wow, well, you can build a trap, but what goes up must come down. The sacrifices you make, no mean a trap will stay around. You steady overdosing, you double cup trying to slow it down. Live the fast life and wonder why you in jail now. The patience in your hatred misguided youth of your movement. Nope, don't start that. Flip it and keep it moving. Generation became users. Get